Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Minister Alan Marshall of Middletown. It is good to be back with you. I'm excited to continue our discussion and dive into part five of our devotional series. Over the last four days, we discussed topics such as lessons from a storm, finding purpose in a storm, shifting focus in a storm, and knowing that Jesus cares about you in a storm. And today, we're going to go back to the same passage of Scripture in Mark 4, 35 through 41 to talk about having faith in a storm. You know, one of my favorite things to do when reading the Bible is to examine the areas in which Bible characters are able to display great amounts of faith in God. In doing this over the years, I've come down to the understanding that great faith is usually manifested when there is great challenge. And here in Mark 4, the disciples have spent so much time with Jesus and have been hearing him preach and explain parables from verses 1 through 34. And now in 35 through 41, they are experiencing a live parable. Let's read Mark 4, 35 through 41. It says, On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. And the other boats were with them. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the seas obey him? Over the course of this devotional, I've been using the term storm to symbolically represent the unexpected tragedies of life. I've been likening this to a storm because when you're in the midst of a tragedy, your perception is often tainted into thinking that there is no hope. My friends, where there is a need for faith, challenge is made manifest. And when challenge is made manifest, choice is presented. Let's read verse 40 again and see this. It says, he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? In other words, Jesus is asking his disciples when a challenge arose, why did you choose fear over faith? You see, the Bible shows us that God did not create us nor fashion us to operate off of fear. In fact, fear cripples our minds. It paralyzes our progress and halts our momentum. And this is why the Bible shows us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, the overarching issue in this passage is that the disciples allowed the wind, the waves, and the swaying of the boat to convince them that they were somehow going to die. When in fact... Their salvation was resting peacefully in the stern of the boat. I ask you today, what are you going to choose, faith or fear? Are you going to allow the enemy to convince you that the winds and the waves of your storm are stronger than the master of the sea? You see, asleep in the boat was Jesus, who was fully God and fully man, the manifested word of God who became flesh, the very God that spoke the sun, moon, and stars into place. What is a storm to the very God that speaks life? What is a storm to the God that raises the dead? What is a storm? When storms arise, will you choose faith or will you choose fear? I believe that as you are listening to this devotional, God is inviting you to make a choice as to where you will put your faith. Will it be in the storm or will it be in God? When storms arise, what will you choose? You've been listening to Minister Alan Marshall of Middletown, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.